it's going, yes. So lunch is coming up, so exciting. Um, this group is from Ozarks Technical Community College, and they're presenting a project they did in their uh, freshman honor seminar course. Um, and they did it just this fall, so they're fresh off that project. Um, the students um, are from diverse backgrounds, so they're not in, in any one major. Andrea is a chemistry major, and then Caitlin is early childhood education, and then Steve is emergency management and logistics in the business field, so I had to write that one down. So. Um, and so they're just going to tell us a little bit about the project and its outcome. And then um, they had originally planned for a 15 minute session, and we thought they had signed up for a 15 minute session, but it turns out they gave them a 15 minute panel discussion. So they have worked this week to try to you know, accommodate this time difference, but we will probably get out a little earlier, which I assured them that everybody would be excited to get to lunch. Anyway, so uh, I'll go ahead and turn over to Andrea. Thank you. Welcome and thank you for attending our panel today. Uh, Titles Crisis Averted. We will be talking about how we transformed our project into an actual event. Uh, it started with the, our honors class, which in the curriculum it states that we have to have a research a real world issue and then try and find a solution on a local level. And. Uh, which can seem daunting whenever you first like read the, the syllabus at the beginning of the semester, but halfway through the semester, after you've had many discussions and have an idea of where you're going to go, it's a little less daunting. But then you only have half a semester to actually complete your action plan. Like other ideas, all other projects are started up with inspiration. And ours actually came from a simple YouTube video that was shown during class. It showed uh, two students going around a campus petitioning to end women's suffrage. For you who do not know what suffrage means, it's the right for women to vote. They asked mainly females, and we'll just leave it at most women are vehemently against women's suffrage. They think it's terrible and should be abolished. It really shocked us that students could easily sign a petition without even knowing what they were signing and had no care to even look up what the term suffrage meant, and they just went with assumptions. From there, that led many class discussions, and uh, a slide change if you don't mind, Stephen. Thank you. These uh, class discussions, we talked about the younger generation's apathy and how they're not willing to research or have no civic motivation or to continue with traditions or ideas. And we were able to base our, the majority of our research project off of how uh, statistics were really bleak when it came to voter turnout. Uh, we went ahead and did research for our event, which was mainly our, uh, we started off with secondary research to kind of give us a direction of where we were going, which was mainly, uh, we tried to find correlations in articles between low voter turnouts and voter registration. And since we didn't have much time to really come up with an action plan, whatever we learned from our secondary research is what prompted our actual action plan. And to support the theory that low voter turnout was caused, one of the main reasons was from lack of registration to vote, we went ahead and had primary research, and the simplest way to do that is through surveys. So we created basic surveys that asked students and participants about civic knowledge and whether they were registered to vote. Well, um, they were distributed to mainly the honors students because we had the easiest access to them. But then we would also hand them out to students nonchalantly walking down the halls, eating lunch, studying. We also had a very extroverted classmate of ours run up to several individuals and excitedly hand them surveys while they just kind of stared blankly at them. <laughs> um, and we decided to go with an event to help solve the issue of lack of voter registration since we knew that we had the most access to people aged 18 to 24 on campus and that an event would be able to reach the majority of these people. And we uh, named our event Civic Involvement Day, which we made a focus around voter registration and so we had a booth to register, then we also had local political parties coming through, such as the Republicans, the Democrats, and we even had the Libertarians show up. 
We had organizations called the League of Women Voters make an appearance, and to tie it back to OTC, we also had our own honors program, Phi Theta Kappa, and Student Government Association. And Caitlin will tell you more about that. Okay, as we planned our brainchild event, we soon realized that organization and effective coordination was vital to its success. We um, worked as a group to designate labor between us, and we had um, one of our funny stories was we decided to try and bribe the SGA to bring their um, popcorn, mach popcorn machine if we could give them a table at our event. And um, we decided the date, time, and place because we wanted as much time to get ready for it as possible, so we tried to push it back as far as we could. And we had it in the first week of December, which was the week before finals. So um, it was a little crazy there for a while, but we got everything, you know, it, it, it happened. So that's all that matters. Um, we designated contact from the different groups, um, to the different people in the group, through phone, email, smoke signal, however we could get a hold of people to get them to come. Um, as Andrea said, we had our on-campus organization, organizations such as on Program, by Theta Kappa, SGA, and our political parties. Um, when we were contacting the political parties, the Republicans, they were, they were the most difficult because we actually had to physically go to their office and we got a phone number and an email from the receptionist there. But when we tried to use them, we didn't get any, um, no response, no anything. So we had no idea if they would show up or not. They did, unlike the Democrats, who, when we went to their office, they physically penciled in our event on their calendar and said, yeah, we'll take care of it, you know, we'll be there. The event, nothing. We were just kind of left holding the ball and we had to rush and find some pamphlets to put on the table because we had to have equal representation of each political party to stay within the boundaries of OTC's um, like political association legality um, rules and guidelines such that. The Libertarians were very enthusiastic when we invited them to our event. They showed up, they were well prepared, they were on time. They were actually the most enjoyable group there. It was really kind of interesting how that turned out. Another set of difficulties we encountered, well not necessarily difficulties, but obstacles was a necessary paper trail we had to go through of um, document, documenting our contact with the political parties. We had to submit that to our professor. Um, we also we had an obstacle with a quick um, approval time that we had. From the time we submitted our proposal to um, the necessary chain of command on up to the chancellor's office upstairs, there was about four days when we had the green light. So that threw everything we were doing into warp speed, and from that point on, we were just trying to stay one step ahead of whatever was happening with our group. Um, at the event, we had very um, low attendance, which um, disappointed us. We, we didn't, um, yeah, we forgot that. There's a lot of different issues that tied into that. But we had lots of positive feedback from everyone who participated in the event, from the the students who actually did register to vote, we got some registered. Um, the groups on campus that participated, they were very interested in having another one that they could um, kind of get their face out in the student public a little more in the political parties. The thing that was so interesting about our event is that through the demographics of our college, it's not something that happens a lot. We're a commuter college and there's no student life on campus because we're, there's no housing. We have very few student-driven organizations and clubs and such. And we don't also don't have the very traditional student um, age demographic. I mean, typically on a college campus, you'll find 18 to 24 year olds everywhere. But on our campus, we have 17 year olds to people in their mid 60s. So it's very different than a typical college campus would be. And this point, So what did we learn from all of this? Well, the purpose of our project was to quantify the lack of civic engagement amongst the college student demographics, <coughs> specifically the statistics on voter registration, educating the potential voter, as well as combating the apathy that exists toward politics in general. What we found were that while registered, the drive to attend a civic involvement day in itself were very low. And talking about low interest on turning out. Last month, Missouri held its presidential primary. 
of which, according to the Missouri Secretary of State's office, less than 8% of eligible voters in the state of Missouri actually turned out to vote in a presidential primary, regardless of whether other issues were on the ballot, either locally or regionally. The staggering statistics, of course, include all eligible voters, but perhaps on reflection, our research should have went around all demographics instead of just narrowing the focus to 18 to 24 year olds. Secondary research can give you a good foundation on which to start, but our primary research, as already discussed, relied specifically on surveys. While it asked many pertinent questions, such as age demographics, and whether you were registered to vote or not, the one question our group forgot to think of was the one important question of, do you vote? And according to the Secretary of State's office, it would appear no would be the answer to that. <laughs> as time was the enemy here, as surveys were not submitted en masse as we had hoped through the college email system, we felt we did not have enough time to revise our hypothesis as originally presented. So not having much time in which to work, we went with what we had. It's our suggestion that if you attempt something of this magnitude, spend a good deal of time ahead of time, making sure you have the right questions given to enough people with more than an adequate time frame in which to process the information. In advertising, this seemed to be the main area that we needed to improve upon. In the planning stage of the event, many things went smoothly such as getting the event approved so quickly, which we had not anticipated, and getting the groups to agree to come. Not following through the other avenues of social media besides Facebook, or utilizing simple things like the campus paper, sending out local PSAs through radio or television, that did come back to haunt us as the event grew closer. We had also requested a mass email be sent directly to each student through our email program. However, that did not happen, but we did get a mention in our upcoming event section, which was sent in mass to all students, not whether they had the opportunity to read it or actually read it is a different story. Throughout the project, we had a little thing called conflict. Well, not throughout, let's just say. Conflict does have the potential to arise in any group, and while we all started out on an even keel, our group had good rapport with one another through most stages of the collaborative effort, but as the deadline did approach, we did have major conflict between two of our, mem our members involving the lack of advertising. And to shed a little bit more light on this, I'll bring Andrea back up to explain. As Stephen mentioned, our group started off with great group dynamics. We got along fine, there was no issues. We even bragged about how we had no group con no issues between the groups. But as deadlines did come closer to the, you know, end, our group kind of did fall victim to conflict, and so I partake in part of it. Uh, I felt that the work had been skewed a little bit in one direction uh, towards one of our other group mates, and even I had bottled up frustrations for quite a while, and so even a simple email had set me off. After an exchange of a couple of angry emails with this other participant, uh, we had our creator step in and we had a session with them. We were able to talk through our issues and we were able to finish the pro project with no it lapse of anything. So, but if you do have group issues, an arbitrator is a great way to kind of take a step back and get a logical viewpoint for both of them to be able to work through your issues. And we'll let Stephen continue talking about the first conflict. Thank you. Just because you think everything's going to work out peachy in the beginning, listen to that voice in the back of your head. Things will happen. It's inevitable. We are human, after all. Perhaps, on our, in our specific issue, on reflection, perhaps knowing ahead of time that if situations like this do occur, that all parties understand that mediation will be needed, maybe even a contract of sort, perhaps, between the, the group, the professor, and even a mediator ahead of time. So that way, things like this will know what avenues to take if you find yourself in that situation. As Andrew mentioned, it was resolved when we were able to get on down to business. Now, the event itself, the Civic Involvement Day, as mentioned, we had the uh, finals that we have. The day of, actually the night before the day, we had a little minor snowstorm, but in Missouri, people, you know, they see a dust on the road, they 
and not to drive very well. So not only the night before, but also that morning of, uh, the snow continued to fall. Uh, we also had, uh, again, finals coming up. And so the, the turnout for the event was a lot lower than we had anticipated. The atrium of the student commons was where we set up the event. The participants, with the exception of the Democrats, showed up on time and push come to shove, the Democrats would not show up. So I ran across town real quick, grabbed some pamphlets. We had to have representation from each political group because that was part of our process through OTC that all political groups be represented. Didn't necessarily say how they were supposed to be represented. So we figured a couple pamphlets on their table and this explained to people when they asked how come the Democrats aren't here. We said, well, here's a number called and ask. So uh, we'll, let, we'll leave that one alone. But the organizations that did show up, uh, they did have a good rapport with the people who did stop by. And it was, it was a good time, all, all things considered. The, uh, the turnout itself, I was a little frustrated with. But after talking to an instructor after the fact, uh, she informed me that feel empowered that you were able even to pull off something like this, regardless of the turnout. Uh, and if it makes you feel any better, she said, Hey, sometimes when the faculty plans things, it doesn't necessarily go as great either. So, okay, not bad then. So, walked away feeling better than when during the process of the event itself. So, <clears throat> excuse me. However, understanding that the advertising hasn't gone, hadn't gone as planned, the weather, the upcoming finals, of course, participation is low. But we affirm that the student body itself really doesn't have any incentive to participate unless it comes to any self-motivated interest that would feed into the student himself or herself. Uh, we suggested uh, for anybody who wants to hold this down the line, something to this effect, maybe an extra 10 points of credit in your sociology or poli sci class or something, you know, bribing the professors to, to allow that to happen. Uh, holding a, a, perhaps a, a music event in correlation with, uh, we have a lot of talented artists on campus that are always out plucking the guitars during, during uh, classes and things like that, uh, bribing them with a little more than popcorn. You know, I can get the smoker out next time. We'll have a big old uh, barbecue bit going or something. So there's other things on reflection. Of course, hindsight is always going to be In conclusion, while we did get some sense of accomplishment from pulling together an event as uh, also a collaborative paper that we were able to put together in this small amount of time as well and turn in, uh, we realized upon reflection that there obviously were things that went well and some very important things that did not. While we three are far from pros at any of this, we felt it would perhaps help some of you in our audience to learn from our successes as well as our failures in hopes that you too may succeed in the burning crisis. Like, there's so many other things going on if they're not motivated by other factors. Um, 
taking on an extra commitment usually isn't worth it to them because they don't see the, the benefits beyond like um, whatever the free thing is that they get out of whether it be music or um, some kind of entertainment or food. Um, unless they're really motivated themselves to kind of get the experience. So I can kind of relate to the kids and the food. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, in one of my previous classes I had, it talked about trying to gather people in a group. And they said the biggest problem with getting a group of people is they're all tuned into one radio station. And it's WIIFM. And it, those initials are what's in it for me. And if you cannot find something that would make it apply to them, then a lot of times they're going to tune you out because there's nothing in it for them. And I've noticed a lot of times if you can't do that, then a lot of people don't show up. An example would be last semester, our political science instructor said that we would get 10 bonus points if we went and watched this uh, political women's movement thing that they were having over in Lincoln Hall about uh, women pilots and what women pilots had to go through uh, for getting rights and stuff like that in the military. And it was a veteran, this honor, honoring women in the military thing. We were all told in our classes, in our political science classes, that if we showed up, we got points. So I think that if the points weren't mentioned, I don't think I would have gone to it. So um, it definitely in the future, if something like this were to happen, you know, a presentation of some sort, uh, maybe find the instructors that might find that, you know, an educational or empowering experience and, for their students and ask them if they minded you know, first of all, announcing it in their class, and second of all, see if they are willing to give participants some sort of bonus points. Yeah, and that really our problem, like with that area, was because we had had so little time, and there's just so many things flying in our head, and we're just trying to just duck and keep going. So it's hard to organize something in a couple of weeks. Yeah. By the time we even considered that as an option, it was like the next. Day. Like the next week, it was the Friday before, and then the Tuesday was our event. We're just like, there's no way that it would even be possible. Yeah, it's okay. I'm probably beating a dead horse, but uh, I've worked, I've taken some culinary classes before I change. Uh, food is king. I mean, any, every event that, you know, I took part in making food for actual events and partook in, in some of the event, events that Barry has attended. And uh, every successful event that we have at our school, a lot of people show up with is going to have food. And the better the food, the better the turnout. I mean, because we're, you know, poor college kids and, you know, who can pass up a free meal. So, you know, that every every event at our school that I've attended and that, that has been big and, and has stood out, has it's centered around food. And it's also a good social uh, medium for people to meet over food, it's, you know, and, and kind of have unity. So that, I think that's the principle.
professors or, or writers or, or something like that. We could, we're not allowed to have any candidate or any elected official there on the stump, if you were, because of legality. So that was that was one of our thoughts was to have perhaps some some of that interaction with the potential voters and, and the potential uh, you know candidates um, that was not allowed. Do you think it would work better at like a campus like Missouri State where it's like people live there and most definitely because I mean as some of you from OTC know we don't have that many organizations whereas you know Missouri State Evangel uh, Southwest Baptist they all have you know, people who live there, it's their own little community, they're more interacting, um, whereas a lot of us are just coming to class, doing their time, turn around, going home or work, or, or both. So yes, I think it would have had a bigger impact on a bigger college campus. I'm a teacher that teaches a class where I do a lot of work projects, and the biggest issue with the work projects is conflict. And so much so that many people say to me, I'd rather do this entire semester long research project by myself, than do it with other people, which, you know, there's benefits to both things. So what could you have known, or what could, it, what could an instructor teach you, or talk with you about what kind of conversations would you have wanted to have that would have helped you with the conflict? A lot of personality assessments have been fairly helpful, and I know the leadership class that we have offers another separate test just for leadership personality type, something like that. And those can give students a lot better insights to themselves, and be able to pair up with other students that match their needs and so you can avoid having the two boisterous personality types fighting over leadership or whatnot. How do you decide though? Do you put the people together that would be the same because then they conflict with each other because they both have or do you put people who are opposite so the person who's very intense can, you know, play off the person who's going to be more? Yeah, which yeah, is the same one. Something like that. What the, the goal is to strive for is complementary. I mean, there there is a, a line, a happy medium between conflicting and overwhelming, and that's really what we're struck with is um, desire in a group setting. We kind of had that naturally, just because um, we kind of we didn't get into our group until partway through the semester, and by that time we kind of just kind of knew each other and then. Um, we really got lucky for the first few weeks. We all just kind of went down the river together, and it was only like, right before the event that we had our like really one conflict. We were we had other groups in our class doing other projects, and we were always amazed at how many conflicts that they had as compared to us. But I, it was probably just specific to just kind of a lucky kind of group and what we were doing, and just also different factors. Do you think it would be better to instead of establish harmony groups, learn how to work through conflict? Definitely. Because um, in the real world, world situation, you do not have matching personality types. So maybe it would be wiser next time to approach it instead of having matching personality types be able to more people butt heads to work through it. Would there be a way that you could do that? I don't know if it would be, if you're trying to actually accomplish something on a specific deadline, you don't want it to interfere with your actual end. But it is a nice learning thing to do. So it, it's not, I wouldn't recommend to set yourself up in conflicting things where it might compromise the end goal, but to have students learn, then yes. Usually by choice, it's not an either or situation. I mean, usually there's like a little bit of both. So, I mean, it's, it's a skill you need to learn out of their way. I think what you're going to find in the quote unquote real world is a lot of businesses will give you team oriented projects and, and say, get it done. Right. And that's about all the, the guidelines they give you. And so I just I just have to say this. You're not always going to have the opportunity to say, well, let's let's find out what our personalities are like and therefore you have to work through the conflict. You know, and, and the deadline is next Friday. I want to see it ready to go, get it done. Just a little FYI. That's yes. just being in the business world for a little longer than the ladies here, I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, because you're right. You have this is when it's due. That's all. That's the direction that I can completely agree. That's the direction you have, and there is no wiggle room. There is no excuse unless you want to beat the pavement. Well, right. okay. well one thing about uh, I'm in that leadership class, and, and I even if you're just aware of, of what the different personality types are, not necessarily knowing what each one is, you can prepare. 
prepare for how those people need the, the information and what what uh, their needs are to work. You know, like some people, you just tell them to do, they want to be left alone and do it. And, and so, you know, even if you don't know each person's individual personality type, you can at least learn, you know, if you learn just the basics of how to deal with it, things that a lot better too. Because most conflicts caused by frustration. So if you get into something that they can take and, and learn something that fits into their role of way they do things, then I think it works a lot better. My question would be related to you guys' turnout, you know, and, and you guys talked about you felt like that it was unsuccessful because of, you know, the factors that not as many people showed up as you would have liked. Uh, what would have been more satisfying, the, the fact that the people that shown up to the event were actually interested in it, or would you rather have a large group of people that, are, that aren't really interested in what's going on? I think uh, a little of both, you know, quite honestly. Um, if you're not interested, perhaps you might have been by the time that you left. You know, so that's one avenue I would have liked to have seen some some novices, green ones, however you want to put it, show up and go, uh -huh, have that aha moment kind of thing. Uh, and definitely people who uh, are interested and have motivation to get there in the first place. Uh, I, now, I did see a couple other people go and, and, and went and go get somebody 